The BMP-2M is the newest squadron vehicle released in War Thunder, being the result of a modernisation project for the legendary BMP-2. The M variant comes with some welcome additions, such as a 30mm grenade launcher, second generation thermal optics, and probably the best anti-tank guided missiles in the game. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the performance, weapons and playstyle of the BMP-2M. Starting as always with the basics, this vehicle is a rank 7 battle rating 9.3 light tank located in the Soviet tech tree. Being a rank 7, you will only be efficient at researching vehicles between the ranks of 6 and 7. To get the BMP, you will have to grind out 520,000 squadron points. If you are in a squadron with a high activity score, you can get a maximum of 20,000 squadron points every 3 days. This means it will take a minimum of 78 days to unlock this tank for free. But even after grinding for that long, you will still be required to pay 1,140,000 silver lines to buy the vehicle. Alternatively, you can outright purchase the BMP2M for a cost of 7,300 golden eagles. Regardless of which method you use to unlock this tank, you will still have to pay 290,000 silver lines to put this vehicle in your lineup. As this is a top tier vehicle, you do kind of need at least an expert qualification to be highly competitive in this tank. This will set you back another 1,080,000 silver lines, and if you want an ace qualification, that will be a whopping 2,800 golden eagles. One thing very nice about the BMP2M is its incredibly low repair cost of 2032 silver lions, meaning you can play it quite recklessly without risking going bankrupt. Going on to the rewards, the BMP has a base RP modifier of 2.52, which is very good for a rank 7 vehicle. You can expect an RP modifier of 252% with a free to play account and 504% with a premium account. This vehicle also has a very respectable base silver line modifier of 1.5. With a free to play account, you can expect a silver line modifier of 150%, and with a premium account, that rises to 225%. If you'd like to know more about the BMP-2M and whether it's worth the 78 day grind or 7000 golden eagles, then stick around for the rest of the video. The BMP-2M is powered by a 360 horsepower engine and has a weight of 14.5 tonnes, giving the vehicle a power to weight ratio of 24.8 horsepower per tonne. While this is good by Cold War standards, our battle rating 9.3, which in reality will be mainly up to is the 10.3. Your power to weight ratio is pretty much lower than average. The majority of main battle tanks have a better power to weight ratio than you, which left me a little bit disappointed with the mobility of this tank. The BMP does have a pretty good top speed of 65 km per hour, but you don't really achieve this on rough terrain, and due to the comparatively low power to weight ratio than the main battle tanks around you, you feel quite sluggish. Another drawback is the BMP's pretty poor reverse speed of 10.5 km per hour. At battle rating 9.3, most vehicles have more than double the BMP's reverse speed, so just check it is clear before pushing out, as you won't be able to make a speedily recovery back into cover. The BMP2M is also unable to neutral steer, meaning you cannot turn on the spot. The M variant of the BMP2 is able to float on drive in water, although the speed at which you move in water is significantly slower than that of on land. So I would highly recommend against going in water with this vehicle. It makes you slow and an easy target. Overall, the mobility of the BMP2M is a little bit disappointing for a 9.3 vehicle. It was unable to use its mobility to get into early game strong positions, as the main battle tanks move faster than you. Because of this lack of speed, and as we'll see, lack of armour, I found the BMP2M was kind of forced into a mainly passive light tank playstyle. While the BMP2M is by no means unplayable, its lack of mobility makes it feel less flexible than the BMP2 at battle rating 8.3. The BMP-2M uses an almost identical chassis to the regular BMP-2, which means it retains the poor armour protection. To test the armour of this vehicle, we'll be using the DM-23 round at a range of 500 metres. Starting with the low frontal plate, although it is well angled to around 62 degrees, it still only provides a measly 30 mm worth of protection. Moving to the upper frontal plate, it is well angled to around 78 degrees and provides around 40 mm worth of protection. Its well angled slope will allow you to bounce the occasional round, but this will be due to enemy players' incompetence and not your armour performance. Moving up to the turret, again, the armor performance is pretty poor. The angle of attack differs from around 72 to 32 degrees. Moving from one side to the other, you can see that the cheeks of the turret provide around 70mm worth of armor, with the turret mantlet only providing around 25mm of armor protection. Moving on to the sides, the front of the turret gives you around 50mm, which drops down to around 25mm as you move to the rear of the turret. The whole side is almost a constant 15mm of armor protection, which makes you vulnerable to pretty much every large caliber machine gun in the game. The rear of the vehicle has the same armor protection as the whole sides, with both the rear turret and hull offering 15mm of protection. Overall, the armour of the BMP-2M is borderline useless against all modern weaponry. You can't risk being shot at in this vehicle, which further enforces the passive light tank playstyle I mentioned previously. The
The BMP-2 m retains the same primary ammo to the BMP-2 a 8.3. This is a great 2A40 30mm autocannon. It has a high rate of fire and is fully stabilised, making it incredibly effective against the sides of main battle tanks, lightly armoured vehicles and helicopters. Your stock belts contain a mix of high explosive and armour piercing, the latter of which having around 63mm worth of penetration. But the real strength of this gun is its APDS belt. This gives you 82mm of penetration. This combination of high penetration as well as high velocity easily allows you to take out helicopters and slow moving planes. The BMP-2M also gets a few new additions in the firepower department. One of these additions is the AG-30 grenade launcher. This fires the VOG-30 high explosive frag grenade which only has a measly 6mm of penetration. This isn't particularly useful for killing other players, but I use it for knocking down walls and railings. The last addition are the four missile launch tubes mounted in pairs on either side of the turret. These missiles can be fired on the move and in rapid succession. You can reload the set of four once, giving you eight missiles in total. However, the reload of the missile tubes will only begin when all four have been fired. With these tubes, you can fire two missiles. The first is the 9M133 tandem charge missile. This carries 6.16kg of TNT equivalent and is able to penetrate 1200mm of armour after ERA. This basically means that the missile can penetrate every vehicle in the game with ease. The second missile is a 9M133 FM3. This is basically the same as the previous missile, except with a purely high explosive warhead. It contains 9.24kg of TNT equivalent and is able to penetrate 61mm of armour. You can think of these as player guided S24 missiles as found on the MiG-21 SMT for example. While good for memeing, I wouldn't recommend taking out these missiles. The BMP-2 m also gets a standard rifle caliber machine gun mounted coaxially, as well as 6 smoke grenades which fire 3 at a time, giving you 2 smoke charges. The BMP is also fitted with a laser rangefinder which makes your 30mm cannon viable even at longer ranges. The weapon handling of the BMP-2 m is also very good. You have a very wide field of view whilst in the gunner's sight, as well as 2nd generation thermal imaging and 12 times long range zoom. This combination allows you to scan and search a large amount of area relatively quickly, allowing you to truly look to your role as a light tank. Overall, the BMP-2M is equipped with some very powerful weapons. The 30mm cannon can tear through the sides of enemies, and the incredibly powerful missiles, as well as the ability to fire on the move, gives you unprecedented firepower for a light tank. Because of the BMP's light armour, it doesn't really matter about taking a reduced ammo load. You are pretty much a one-shot kill regardless of how much ammunition is on board. At the start of a game, you want to try and use your rather limited mobility to try and flank opponents. This will allow you to put both your 30mm cannon and missiles to work. Taking this vehicle along the edges of a map is a good option, but always try and stay in dead ground or concealment such as trees and bushes. From here, you can use your thermal optics to locate and spot enemies. Just remember, your armour is your biggest weakness, so always try to relocate after a firefight is over. Don't try and trade shots with other tanks. Whilst your missiles are capable of dealing with them, main battle tanks are usually more survivable than you, and could possibly survive a first hit, whereas the BMP is typically a one-shot kill. If enemies start returning fire, retreat and relocate. Naturally, this flanking tactic works best on larger maps and War Thunder. On small maps where flanking isn't really an option, maps like Advance to the Rhine, you should try and position yourself in a defensive choke point and let opponents come to you. Alternatively, you can stay close to your friendly main battle tanks and harass the enemies that they engage. The problem, as I mentioned in the performance section, is that your performance is either on par or below most of the main battle tanks you will face, making it extremely hard to get into early game strong positions without running into an enemy. If you do run into an enemy head on, then your missiles are more than capable of knocking them out. The problem is that your missiles travel slowly compared to an AP FSDS round from a tank gun, meaning if both you and the enemy fire at the same time, you will usually die first. Because of this, rushing cap circles at the beginning of a game is pretty much a waste of this vehicle's capabilities. The weak armor leaves you incredibly vulnerable to artillery, and unless you can reliably fire first, trying to brawl with several enemy main battle tanks on a cap is going to get you a one-way trip back to the hangar. In terms of lineups, the BMP is a little let down at battery rating 9.3, as it gets up to you to 10.3 very frequently. However, at 9.3, you can take along the T64A, T72A and T62M as your main battle tanks, as well as the BMP-3 as an additional light tank. If you need more missiles, you can bring along the Sturm S, as well as the ZSU-23-4 Shilka as your anti-aircraft vehicle. However, at battery rating 10.3, which is where all of the footage you have seen was filmed, you can bring along the T-80U, T-80B, T-72 B and T-64B as your main battle tanks. The BMP-3 is an additional light tank, both the Sturm S and the new Chrysanthemum missile launcher. And for air defence you can bring along the legendary Tunguska. And additionally for air cover, it's your choice between the various MiG-21s or KA-52 helicopter. To conclude, I really like the BMP-2M. It has a lot of firepower for a vehicle with a fairly low silhouette, allowing you to be very sneaky, especially on wide open maps. 
It's great weapons, fairly decent mobility, good reward modifiers, and most importantly, a very low repair cost makes the BMP2 a very user-friendly vehicle in top tier. I would recommend that everyone tries to research this vehicle. If anything, it is a free top tier vehicle in one of the best tech trees in the game. But now we move on to whether you should buy it with Golden Eagles. In terms of cost effectiveness, I believe that the BMP2M is a better option than the T55AM. If you buy 51 euros worth of Golden Eagles, you can purchase the BMP for 7300 Golden Eagles and get a Talisman for 2800 Golden Eagles. This will get you a pretty effective rank 7 grinder. I would only recommend this if you're already in the 6th rank of the Soviet tech tree, and only if you like Soviet vehicles, as it is quite a lot of money. I personally did buy this vehicle myself, it wasn't given to me by Gaijin, and I do not regret spending my money. However you choose to grind the BMP2M, it is a fun little vehicle with huge potential, both at its own battle rating of 9.3 and in a full update of battle rating 10.3. As always, I hope you found this video useful lads, and thank you very much for watching.